There are foods that can improve focus, and then there are true ways to sort of hack your system into getting better focus the right way. You see, everywhere you turn when you're watching videos on YouTube or on the internet, you're hearing about weird kind of random ways to boost your mood or boost focus through little pieces of blueberries or little pieces of different foods that you're going to extract a particular component of. That's not what I want to talk about in this video. In this video, I want to talk about true, proven, scientific ways that you can achieve some more focus. Ways that you can get that extra boost that you need to get through that study session, get through that work day, or to truly be the best version of yourself. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Posting three to five videos per week, giving you health, nutrition, workout, whatever you name it advice. And if you're already a subscriber, make sure you hit that little bell so you can turn on notifications to know whenever I post a new video so you're the first to see it. All right, so let's get right to the good stuff. The first one I wanna talk about is utilizing caffeine and theocrine as a combo. You see, when you utilize caffeine and theocrine as a combo, you have some interesting things happen. And this is not any kind of plug. Caffeine you can get on Amazon, theocrine you can get on Amazon, it's nothing crazy at all. You see, first off, let's talk about how caffeine works when it comes down to actually improving focus in the short term and in the long term. See, a lot of you know by now that caffeine occupies what's called an adenosine receptor. When caffeine occupies an adenosine receptor, it's basically blocking fatigue from ever hitting that receptor. So caffeine sits in that receptor and eventually wears off and the fatigue hits. That's why you crash. But caffeine does do some interesting things while you're on that caffeine high, so to speak. See, caffeine is gonna stimulate energy to a different area of the brain that actually can stimulate the nerves to grow and fire there. So you see the old saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. Well, it does apply when it comes down to your brain. So if caffeine can help that activate a different area of your brain, then you could be in a situation where you can actually stimulate new nerve growth. But now let's talk about what happens when you add theocrine into the mix. You see, a quick breakdown on theocrine. Theocrine is very similar to caffeine. In fact, it's a cousin of caffeine. It's slightly different in that the methyl group is popped off and put in a different chain. So basically you have a ketone that's added to uh, what's called a different ring of the actual molecule. Now, that's all the biochem stuff we don't need to worry about. Basically what that means is theocrine still occupies the same caffeine receptor, that adenosine receptor, but it occupies it in a different way to where it doesn't cause a crash later on, and it also doesn't cause the jitters. So you might be wondering, why wouldn't I just take theocrine? Why even have caffeine? Well, the Journal of Caffeine Research actually found that when you combine caffeine and theocrine is where the magic happens. So all the benefits of theocrine get greatly exacerbated by having caffeine in the mix, and that's what the Journal of Caffeine Research found. But let's talk about what the studies are showing behind theocrine as far as moving forward with your brain development. You see, the Journal of Functional Foods published a study that found that theocrine actually supports serotonin levels through an interesting pathway. You see, what happens when we're stressed is we release something known as 5-hydroxytryptamine. Okay? This 5-HT is a good thing and a bad thing. But what we're finding is that theocrine actually acts upon the 5-HT receptor. And what it does is it makes it so that when we're stressed out, the 5-HT receptor doesn't signal other cascades of what is called 5-HIAA. Now this 5-HIAA is something that's released when we're under stress and makes it so that we're not able to focus and use our brain the right way. But since theocrine acts upon the 5-hydroxytryptamine receptor, it means that you're not able to have the negative implication, the negative result of being stressed out when it comes down to your focus and your mood. So why is this a good thing? Well, you think about whenever you're focused, you're usually focused when you're under stress. You're usually focused because you're trying to study for something that's coming up really soon. Or you're just under stress, you're public speaking, whatever. You're under stress and you need to be able to focus. So if you can get rid of that total wild card of stress affecting your ability to learn, then you're in a really sweet situation. Okay, so enough about caffeine and theocrine. Now let's talk about caffeine plus lion's mane. Now, I'm not just talking like a total stimulant junkie here. I mean, I like my caffeine as much as the next guy, but I don't overdo it. But when you combine caffeine with lion's mane, you actually have a whole different world. You see, again, you get the same caffeine benefits. Okay, you get the lighting up of the specific areas of your brain that allow you to activate different portions, okay? Allow you to grow new nerves. But you also get the effect from the lion's mane of stimulating nerve growth factor. You see, when you consume lion's mane, you have an increase in what is called neuropeptide stimulation. This neuropeptide stimulation is where basically your body starts creating more aminos and more peptides that allow the growth of nerve growth factor. Nerve growth factor is exactly what it sounds like. You allow yourself to grow nerves. 
You see, for years we knew that there was IGF, insulin growth-like factor, there was all these different muscle growth factors, but we didn't realize until not that long ago that there was nerve growth factor, that our bodies had the ability to have a specific peptide bond that would allow nerves to grow. And lion's mane greatly enhances this. So when you combine caffeine with lion's mane, you have a short-term boost of memory and a short-term boost of focus. But you also have a long-term effect too. You have a long-term effect of what is called brain-derived neurotropic factor. I've talked about this in many other videos, but BDNF is essentially brain fertilizer. It's what allows your brain to grow new brain cells, specifically in this case, in the hippocampal region of the brain. So when you have the hippocampus portion of the brain, which is responsible for memory and learning, and you have a huge amount of neurogenesis, new nerve growth, you have basically the ability to get smarter over the long term. So you have this short-term effect from the caffeine in lion's mane, and then you have a long-term effect from the lion's mane itself. Now, for those of you that know me, you know that Four Sigmatic is a huge sponsor of this channel, and they have their mushroom coffee, which actually has just that. It has coffee, and it has lion's mane in one super easy, simple packet that you mix with water right there in the morning. So you can get a discount on Four Sigmatic down below in the description, just check the link. All right, now let's talk about something that's a little bit more basic, turmeric curcumin. You may not realize this, but turmeric curcumin is being shown to be one of the most powerful stimulators of that good old-fashioned brain-derived neurotropic factor that I just talked about. You see, turmeric does this in an interesting way. It does this by activating what are known as canonical catenin pathways. And this is what triggers the brain to go in a state of self-repair. You see, once we get too fatigued and too stressed out, sometimes we lose brain cells to the extent where they're just not coming back. They fully die. That's right, if you stress yourself out too much, you might lose those brain cells. But the specific catenin pathway allows the self-repair of your brain to occur. So that means before those cells ever die, they actually get resurrected. They come back from the almost dead. It's like being in a coma for seven years and then waking up and being bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. That happens to your brain cells only when turmeric is in play, simply because of how it activates those specific catenins. Now the cool thing is, we're finding that you only need approximately 0.2 milligrams per kilogram of body weight of curcumin to actually stimulate these stem cells within the brain. So that's what we're doing to make it very, very simple. We're utilizing the production of stem cells in our brain to grow new brain. You see people everywhere getting stem cell injections in their knees, in their elbows, their shoulders, whatever, to help them regenerate. Well, we can actually allow ourselves to produce new stem cells and regrow stem cells so that we can regrow our brains. Okay, lastly, one other little quick hack that I want you to be able to utilize, and this is a short and sweet one, is use that unsweetened baking chocolate. I've talked about this in so many videos. That unsweetened baking chocolate has no sugar in it, it's just straight up chocolate, and it makes a huge difference in how your brain functions. Very, very high in what is called andandamide. Okay, this andandamide gives you a big boost of mood and focus, but also a huge surge of endorphins, so it allows you to feel really good. Now we also have something in there known as phenylethylamine, which sounds like a crazy chemical, but it's not. It's a plant extract, and it's a flavonoid that is in that dark chocolate. And that phenylethylamine can give you a quick boost, that quick edge that you need when you're really looking for something that's gonna get you over the last half an hour to an hour of that study session. So as always, I wanna make sure you keep it locked in here on my channel. And please make sure that you check out the special discount on Four Sigmatic below, because they are a huge reason that this channel is able to keep doing what it's doing. I'll see you in the next video.